Hi, this is Doug Reeves at Creative Leadership Solutions, where we believe in evidence, passion, and results. Today, I'd like to talk about the power of focus. This is based upon a study of more than 2,000 school plans published by Columbia University Teachers College Press that I wrote, and I'm also indebted uh, to a research partner on this, Brandon Dubeck, uh, who was enormously valuable in helping to get this research completed. We looked at more than 2,000 school plans, about 1,600 in the United States, 400 in Canada, and then we looked at three years of gains or losses in student achievement. We found schools that had 70 priorities, an individual district that had more than 240, and what we learned is that more than six priorities was a counterproductive waste of time. So you want to have the big five findings from this massive study? Here they are. The schools that did the best over three years of these 2,000 was number one, efficacy. Bone deep belief, in the power of teachers influencing student achievement. Let me note parenthetically that more recent studies done completely independently by Robert Marzano, by John Hattie, and others also came to the conclusion that efficacy is one of the most powerful elements in improving student achievement. Prioritization. We simply counted the number of priorities and initiatives that schools had. Once they got beyond six, student achievement gains declined dramatically. Specificity and measurability. You know. I'll bet all of you have had to suffer through some seminar on SMART goals, and I have too, and I, I don't mind SMART goals. Heck, I've, I've written about some of them. But here's what I wanted to know as a researcher. Which part of that SMART acronym really had the greatest impact on student achievement? And it turned out that the first two, specificity and measurability, the S and the M, had dramatically greater influence on student achievement. And finally, monitoring, but not monitoring in the way you might think. It was monitoring of adult actions, not just student results. Everybody says they monitor because they're monitoring test scores. That's like monitoring student weight without knowing what the causes were. In these great schools, they monitored things like frequency of nonfiction writing. They monitored things like the impact of collaborative scoring, the impact of effective leadership and prioritizing and responding to teacher needs and student needs. It's what the adults do that we must monitor, not just what the students do. What were the results? They were dramatic. The schools that were lowest in these areas of efficacy, prioritization, specificity, measurability, monitoring, actually lost ground over the course of three years, more than 30%. Those that were highest in those areas gained more than 16%. Now, you've probably seen reports that say we're statistically significant. Statistical significance doesn't mean a darn thing. It's not a way to make decisions. You've got to have practical significance, what physicians call clinical significance. They don't settle for statistical significance. They want clinical significance. Is it worthwhile doing this and stopping that? Friends, when you go from minus 30 to plus 16, that's clinically significant. What about the highest performing schools? I know you may think, well, Jug, we're a high performing school. It's not broke. Don't fix it. Wait a minute. Of the highest performing schools in the sample, they went from gains of 5% to gains of almost 15% when they got better in efficacy specificity, measurability, prioritization, monitoring. And what about the lowest performing schools? It was tragic. They were losing ground at the rate of 30% a year. They were barely breaking even if they got good at those five characteristics of efficacy, specificity, measurability, monitoring, prioritization. These are really worth doing. Some other findings. Michael Fullen, who wrote the introduction to this book, said, having more than six priorities is inversely proportional to student results. We found that the schools that got to 90% faculty participation had dramatically better gains than those that had low faculty participation. But please note, it said 90%, not 100%. I see way too many of my friends out there who are leading buildings and leading districts focusing on the last 10% when I wish you'd wrap your arms around the 90% of your teachers who are doing everything you ask and more and appreciate the daylights out of them because they're the ones who are getting you across the finish line. And even of that 10%, there's just a few that can't be persuaded. Please stop the toxic arguments with them. Invest your time in appreciating the 90%. And above all, what we learned is it's practices, not programs. After 2,000 school plans, millions of data cells, I can't go out there and tell you, buy this program and don't buy that program, even though that's what a lot of people want me to say. What I can tell you is it's your professional practices that really matter, not what you buy, it's what you do. Thanks for listening. At Creative Leadership Solutions, we provide keynotes, workshops, consulting, and coaching. 
please let us know how we can influence student achievement for you.